मैंने प्रैक्टिकली इन लास्ट सेवन डेज मध्य प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ राजस्थान सारे जगह में सुना हुई सभा करने का कारण मेरा वॉइस भी थोड़ा सा डिस्टर्ब होके रखा है आ, मैं इस बार आना नहीं चाहता था मेरा मन था कि बाद में एक बार फैमिली का साथ आके यहाँ पूरा एक दिन बिताने का लेकिन जब मृत्युंजय जी गुवाहाटी गए और हमें आदरपूर्वक निमंत्रण किया तो मैंने सोचा कि ये एक डिवाइन इनविटेशन है और मुझको ना नहीं बोलना चाहिए इसलिए कल मैं रात दो बजे यहाँ पहुँचा और अभी सभा की बात में तुरंत गुवाहाटी भी जाना पड़ेगा आज मैंने पहला बार कल रात ये संस्था का हेडक्वार्टर में आया हालांकि आसाम में सबका साथ बातचीत होते रहता है कामकाज का बारे में स्पिरिचुअल जर्नी के बारे में बातचीत होते रहते हैं लेकिन यहाँ आके जो एक एनलाइटमेंट एटमोसफेयर देखा लोगों का डिवोशन देखा और साथ साथ में हमारे भारत को स्पिरिचुअल जर्नी एलोंग विथ साइंटिफिक टेम्पार्टमेंट एक विश्व गुरु बनाने का जो यहाँ मैंने संकल्प देखा मेरा मन भी पवित्र हुआ और आप सब लोगों को साक्षात पा के मैं अपने आप बहुत ही पवित्र महसूस कर रहा हूँ आई सेल्यूट ऑल ऑफ यू बाई सांटिंग ओम शांति इट्स ए संस्कृत मंत्र ऑफ एन यूज एज ए ग्रीटिंग्स और सेल्यूटेशन इन भारत कल्चर इट इज द एम्बोडीमेंट ऑफ आवर फिलोसॉफिकल सीकिंग केयरिंग ए डीप स्पिरिचुअल सिग्निफिकेंस इट इज इंडीड ए ब्लेस्ड एक्सपीरियंस फॉर मी टू विजिट दिस ग्रेट सेंटर ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिटी इन दिस प्रिस्टाइन हिल स्टेशन इन द हिस्टोरिक लैंड ऑफ राजस्थान टूडे वी हैव गेदर्ड हियर for the global summit to deliberate upon the topic on divine wisdom for new era naya yog ke liye jo aadhyatmik gyan ka zarurat hota hai iska bare mein charcha karne ke liye aaj hum log yahan sab uposthit hai i thank the brahma kumari wall headquarters for this noble notable initiative I also express my heartfelt gratitude to everybody associated with this great spiritual organization for the opportunity given to me to speak a few words on this enlightened enlightening discourse. It is indeed a pleasure to be present amidst the distinguished gathering here today. <coughs> on this special occasion I offer my deep tribute to Brahma Baba Dada Lekhlas Khupsan Kripalini ji as you we know the spiritual journey of Brahma Kumari began way back in the 1930s when Brahma Baba experienced a series of divine revelation which transformed his life and belief The spiritual vision that Brahma Baba shared with a small group of disciple way back in 1937 has today spread across the globe touching and transforming lives of multi multitude of people the meditation centers and the spiritual classes conducted by the Brahma Kumari are not only promoting the unique spiritual philosophy of this remarkable organization but also immensely helping people to attain self realization and connect with the divine subah mein jaise sabka sath charcha kiya mera sangyan mein aaya kaise 1936 se ye organization 
लोगों को जीवन को परिवर्तन करने के लिए काम कर रहा है कैसे ब्रह्म बाबा ने सबको इंस्पायर किया और आज ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एक विश्व का ही बहुत बड़ा स्पिरिचुअल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बन चुका है और भारत की गौरव गाथा सारा विश्व में डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कर रहा है द ब्रह्म कुमारी फिलोसॉफी इज फॉर्म विथ यूनिक ब्लैंड ऑफ हिंदू स्पिरिचुअल बिलीफ एंड ए डिस्टिंग इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ वेरियस रिलीजियन एंड फिलोसॉफिकल ट्रेडिशन इट टीचेस अस दैट द वर्ल्ड इज अंडर ग्रोइंग एंड ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन टू एन एज ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल एनलाइटेनमेंट एंड पीस ऑफ एन रेफर टू एज द गोल्डन एज और शत योगा The Om symbol of the Brahma Kumari is a visual representation of its spiritual philosophy. The center of the symbol represents the divine, while the other elementary elements convey various aspects of their teaching, including virtues, the divine trinity, spiritual knowledge, and the eternal cycle of life. it serves as a reminder of the organization's core values and principle for its member and is often used as a focal point in meditation and spiritual practice the brahma kumari have gained recognition for their focus on personal transformation meditation and spiritual values they continue to be active in various educational human centered and peace promotion initiative around the world their emphasis is on promoting inner peace as a means to achieve global harmony the brahma kumari's philosophy is unique and distinct from mainstream hinduism even though it incorporates element from hindu spirituality it has attracted followers from various cultural and religious backgrounds who speak who seek spiritual development and personal transformation as i as i come from northeast i must admit that the presence of brahma kumari has greatly enriched the spiritual and social life in our region also The Brahma Kumari began its journey in our state from Tezpur in 1976 which is one of the oldest cities of Assam and has been immense historic significance since then it has been actively serving in the northeast under the guidance of Raja Yogini B K Sila Didi ji and subsequently expanding their presence across the region The regional headquarters in Assam is located in Guwahati with 25 centers spread throughout Guwahati and every district of Assam. Today Brahma Kumari have a network of 220 recognized meditation center in the northeast including various sub center. Their activities encompasses a wide range of initiative such as providing value based programs in educational institute organizing drug drug awareness campaign engaging in village development effort promoting organic farming empowering women through vocational training conducting health camps offering self empowerment and meditation classes raising awareness about road safety participating in cleanliness drive and actively contributing to the environmental protection at this important occasion today i also offer my deep respect to all the dadi and didi who following the maha samadhi of brahma baba continue to guide this organization and its activities their unwavering commitments has helped brahma kumari to emerge as a revered name in the wall of spirituality emanating from the philosophy of ancient bharat due to their dedicated leadership the brahma kumaris have a significant global presence today 
our great nation bharat has been a cradle of civilization spirituality and divine awakeness awakening since antiquity mera hamesha ye behaz hota hai hamare bharat mein bahut log hai jo mante hai ki hamare bharat 1947 15 august se shuru hua hai और हमारा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन और हमारा संविधान ही भारत का मूल्यबोध है लेकिन मैं समझता हूँ कि भारत का जो सिविलाइजेशन है हमारे पाँच हजार साल का जो सनातनी सभ्यता का जो जर्नी है वही भारत का मूल बोध वैल्यूज है और भारत का हमारे जो संविधान है हमारे संविधान इस जास्ते मियर रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द वैल्यूज जो हमें हमारे ऋषि और मुनियों का दीन से सीखा हो और वही ज्ञान हमने भारत का संविधान में समाहित किया हो भारत का संविधान संविधान कोई वेस्टर्न नेशन से प्रेरणा नहीं लेता है भारत का संविधान हमारा ही देश का जो शिक्षा है जो संस्कार है जो हमारे सभ्यता है उनसे ही इंस्पायरेशन लेते हैं तब कोई कोई देश का लोग जब बोलने का कोशिश करता है कि हमको संविधान का आधार में चलना चाहिए मैं हमेशा बोलता हूँ कि आप संविधान का प्रेरणा से चलो लेकिन उससे भी ज़्यादा अगर हमारा सिविलाइजेशन का वैल्यू से सलो तो अच्छा मानव बनेगा और पूरा विश्व को आप नेतृत्व दे सकते हैं इट हैज रीच एन एंशियन हिस्ट्री ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल एंड फिलोसॉफिकल ट्रेडिशन भारत भूमि इज द बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ मेजर रिलीजियंस लाइक हिंदुइज्म बुद्धिज्म जैनिज्म एंड सिखिज्म मेनी रिलीजियन एंड फिलोसॉफिकल मोवमेंट Sasa's Bhakti Movement emerged in Bharata. These movements contributed to the diversity of religions thought. During this period of Bhakti Movement, Sri Manta Sankar Dev introduced Neo Vaishnavism in Assam, connecting the state with the broader cultural consciousness of Bharat birth, along with the path of Bhakti. Mahapuru Sri Manta Sankar Dev introduced Ek Saran Nam Dharma, emphasizing harmony and spirituality for all segments of Assamese society. His teaching emphasized fundamental human values like virtue, truthfulness, goodwill, non-violence, kindness, love, compassion, forgiveness, and patience. He considered these values central to the character of a true devotee. Through his travel across Bharat Barsa, Mahapuru Sri Manta Sankar Dev increased his understanding of the culture of Bharat. He recognized the shared heritage between Assam and the broader subcontinent of Bharat. He was a pioneer in broadening the cultural horizon of the Assamese people. and bringing them closer to the cultural richness of bharat as a whole our country has been a hub of profound spiritual and philosophical development for thousands of years as such bharat has unique cultural and historical significance in the spiritual domain our tradition have always been diverse providing a fertile ground for the emergence of various schools of thought meditation practices and religious philosophies the diversity has contributed to the global richness of spiritual ideas and practice bharat bhumi has a long history of religious tolerance and diversity this inclusiveness has allowed people from various religion religious backgrounds to coexist and share their are spiritual contributing to a culture of religion and philosophical dialogue from the sacred soil emerged the concept and practices of yoga and meditation 
these techniques have been instrumental in helping individual connecting with the inner self attain self realization and explore higher state of consciousness alongside sp such spiritual techniques our sacred land also is a home to the vast body of religious texts scripts are an epics these texts include bhagavad gita the upanishads the ramayana the mahabharata have been instrumental in shaping our moral values of our society the spirituality and universal brotherhood that bharat bhumi emphasizes has been a cornerstone in furthering its ethos of vasudhaiva kutumbakam kutumbakam as propagated in the upanishad bharat has a wealth of pilgrimage site associated with various religion these sacred places draw millions of pilgrims and seekers every year fostering a deep connection to the spiritual tradition this great land has produced numerous spiritual leaders gurus and philosophers who have inspired millions of people around the world our spiritual leader philosophers and sages had a profound impact on the development of religious and philosophical thought figures like gautam buddha mahavira adi shankara sarya and various saints and gurus have left lasting legacies to the mankind prominent figures like mahatma gandhi swami vivekananda paramahansa yogananda and sri aurobindo have played significant roles in a spreading spiritual and human centered values globally sami vivekananda emphasized on spiritual truths and the importance of recognizing the divine essence in all beings he promoted tolerance interfaith dialogue and the idea that different paths to spirituality can lead to the same truth ekam satya vipra bahuda vivanti vivekananda's teaching emphasized the importance of selfless service to the humanity as a means to realize one spiritual potential figures like mahatma gandhi with their deep commitment to the peace and justice have had a significant impact on international diplomacy and the promotion of non-violence in shaping the global spiritual and diplomatic landscape the influence of our great nation continues even today in the present day context in narendra modi as prime minister of bharat has played a prominent role in representing bharat on the global stage he has been advocate for peace sustainable development and environmental protection modi ji has champion initiative like international day of yoga which was adopted by the united nation highlighting the importance of yoga and holistic well being he has also been a strong advocate for renewable energy and climate change mitigation under his leadership bharat has strengthened its diplomatic and economic ties with various nation emphasizing cooperation in areas related to the sustainable development technology transfer and environmental protection with narendra modi ji emerging as a global leader bharat has once again strengthened itself to lead the world to the path of peace and spiritual development as a result bharat's ancient texts philosophy and traditional knowledge have once again surfaced with a great significance all nations have started turning to bharat for divine wisdom of new era as this global summit is organized to deliberate on divine wisdom of new era i'd like to speak a few words on the rich treasure of bharat versus divine wisdom that that can guide the world in this new age vedanta one of the six orthodox school of hindu philosophy offered 
profound wisdom that remains relevant for the modern era. Derived from the Vedas and Vedanta philosophy, provides spiritual insight into the nature, the self, and the ultimate truth. Vedanta emphasizes the importance of, a, of living an ethical and virtual life. Moral values such as truthfulness, compassion, and self-control are seen as essential for spiritual growth and harmony in society. While actively engaging in the world, Vedanta teaches detachment from the material possessions. It focus remains on the eternal and unchanging aspect of life. This wisdom helps individuals navigate the challenges of materialism in the modern era. Vedanta offers the path of Jnana Yuga, which involves inquiry, reflection, and self-realization. This path is particularly relevant in an era when people seek deeper meaning and self-discovery. Vedanta's teaching permit beyond religious boundaries and emphasize the universality of spiritual truth. In a diverse world, this wisdom promotes tolerance, respect, and acceptance of a different beliefs and path. Its teaching continue to inspire individuals in the modern era to seek higher truths and find meaning in their life. The Bhagavad Gita of the Epic Age is another powerful source of Vedanta philosophy. The wisdom of Bhagavad Gita is timeless and remains highly relevant for the modern era. It offers profound insight and guidance that can help individuals navigate the challenge of contemporary life. It seeks to foster spiritual growth, ethical living, and a deeper understanding of one's purpose. The most profound teaching of Gita is the importance of fulfilling one's duty with dedication and integrity. On the other hand, it is equally important to, to become free of the bondage of action. The Gita has a unique solution to this seemingly self-contradictory situation, saying, do your allotted work, but give up its fruits. Be detached and walk. Have no desire for reward and walk. Mahatma Gandhi remarked this to be the unmistakable teaching of the Gita. He said, I, and I quote, He who gives up action falls. He who give, gives up only the reward rises. Jo karam ko tag deta hai, o fail kar jate hai. Lekin jo karam ka fruits ko, karam ka jo akansa hai, fruits hai, unko jo sor deta hai, o hi paramatma ka saat bilay ho jate hai. In a wall, Filled with success and failure, this teaching helps individuals maintain composure and mental peace, irrespective of external circumstances. The Gita teaches us the concept of karma yoga, which promotes selfless, selfless action and service to others. This teaching encourages individuals to contribute to the well-being of society without seeking personal gain, fostering a spirit of social responsibility. A common belief about religion is that there is no place for religion in material pursuit. It is believed that religion is only for salvation. The Gita has dispelled this delusion. There is no line of demarcation between salvation and worldly pursuit. On the contrary, religion must rule Every world is pursued. Dharam hi sangsar ko salana sahte sahiye. Karam tyag nahi dena sahiye. Lekin karam ka mool dharam ho na sahiye. Ehi hame Bhagavad Gita sikhata hai. Does the Gita encourage balance between material and spiritual pursuit? It advises individual to engage in the world while maintaining a connecting to the divine promoting a holistic approach to the life. In similar vein, Sainasa, as articulated in the Gita, 
is not complete halt of all activity. It rather means all work, yet no work. Bhagavad Gita hame sainas lene ke le nahi bolta hai. Bhagavad Gita bolta hai ki aap karam karo aur karam ka jo phal hai isko Bhagavan ko arpan karo tabhi आपका जीवन सफल होगा और वही आपका जीवन का मार्ग है। The teaching of the Bhagavad Gita remains highly relevant in the modern era. The Gita emphasizes active engagement in the worldly pursuit with maintaining detachment from the outcomes. In chapter two, Lord Krishna advises Arjuna to perform his duty steadfastly while letting go. Of attachment to success and failure. Lord Krishna defines this composer as yoga. As their conversation progresses in chapter 3, the focus shifts from individual as the doer to the re recognition that all actions are governed by the material nature. Krishna reveals that ignorance leads individual to falsely identify themselves as a doer. Finally, in the chapter 11, Krishna discloses that Arjuna is merely an instrument in the grand scheme of time, and it is the divine will that has already brought about the destruction of the enemy. Moe bhoite nihataha purba mebo eba nimitra matrama bhaba soibba sasina. Hame Krishna ne bola. कि हमें शत्रु को मार ही चुका हूं आप खाली निमित्त है भगवान का ये विश्व का क्या होना है भगवान का रसना पूर्वे होता है मानव खाली भगवान का काम इन एक्शन में लाने का एक निमित्त ही होता है हम कोई दुआर नहीं है हम करने वाला नहीं है जो करने वाला है वो परमात्मा ही है और भगवान ही है ऐसा ही भागवत गीता हमें शिक्षा देता है। This phenomena holds true for the ancient text of Bharata as well. With passing era, the vital, the vital words and metaphors found in scripture acquiring expanded meanings. However, the core teaching, however, the core teachings of the Bharat verse or the Bharat philosophy remain unwavering. Bhagavad Gita ka baad bohut samay ho suka hai. Logo ne alag alag tarika se hamare dharam ko, hamare saibhata ko explain karne ka koosis kiya. Lekin sab ka mool bhoot eki hai ki ek hamare upar paramatma hai. Har atma paramatma ka santan hai. Aur ham jab vishya mein rehta hai, तो हमारा आत्मा को हम प्यूरिटी देना चाहिए, हम आत्मा को संस्कारित करना चाहिए, सो डेट हमारे पुनर्जन्म नहीं होता है और हम भगवान का लोटस फीट में पहुंच सकता हूं, परम आत्मा का साथ हमारा बिलाय होता है। मैं मानता हूं हमारे जो गलत सिंता है, हमारा जो बहुत ज्यादा मैटेरियल पार्षद है, वो आत्मा को परमात्मा से दूर लेके जाते हैं, आत्मा पॉइजन हो जाता है, आत्मा का ऊपर एक ब्लैक कोटेड कलर आ जाते हैं, लेकिन हम जब परोपकार करता है, हर समय हम लोगों के कल्याण के लिए काम करता है, जैसे हमारे कपड़ा जब गीला हो जाता है, हम इसको उपास करता हूँ तो कपड़ा पुनर्साब हो जाता है, ऐसे सेवा और परोपकार से हम हमारे आत्मा का सुधीकरण कर सकता हो और आत्मा परम आत्मा से बिलाय हो सकता है। राजा योगा हमें यही सिखाता है और राजा योगा जब मैं सीखता हूँ तो मैं सेवा के लिए अक्रिस्त होता हूँ और सेवा से ही मेरा आत्मा निर्मल होता है और निर्मल आत्मा ही परम आत्मा का सबसे प्रिय होता है। और निर्मल आत्मा ही परम आत्मा का पास सले जाते हैं इसीलिए हमारे ब्रह्मा कुमारी यूनिवर्सिटी में हमें 
आत्मा का शुद्धिकरण का बात सिखाता है ये एक बहुत ही परम ज्ञान है और ये ज्ञान हमको जब मिलते हैं तब हम जानने हम हम जान देते हैं कि शरीर हमारे टेम्पोरारी है आत्मा ही मैं हूँ और मेरा पवित्रता ही मुझको परम आत्मा तक लेके जाएगा पुनः एक बार हम ये मन से हमारे दादी और दीदी को और ब्रह्म कुमारी का साथ जोड़े हुए तमाम साधक और सेवकों को पुनः एक बार नमन वंदन और अभिनंदन करते हुए मैं मेरा वाणी को विराम देता हूँ धन्यवाद